Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. Um, I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. I have with me today Janice B. Gordon. Uh, Janice, before we get into the and, and talk today, remind everybody where they can get hold of you. Janice B. Gordon, whether it's LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, just put it in Janice B. Gordon. I'm the only one. Uh, and and you're very active on social. Oh, um, I love it. Yes, you, you do. You do. And I think before we start this, I think we 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 want to talk about COVID nineteen and some of the, the things that that we can do. Um, but I think we need to probably start off by actually saying that, you know, there's a lot of difficulty out there and, um, you know, our hearts, you know, we were talking this before you came on, you know, our hearts go out to the people that are, um, first of all, in frontline services. So, I mean, in the UK, that's the NHS, but in fact, any healthcare worker, um, any uh, frontline staff, I mean, even delivery drivers, you know, are, are seen in, in, in most countries as being um, key workers. Uh, even, um, I mean, the farmers and that are now seen being as key workers and, and all of this is so important. Um, and it is so difficult right now. You know, uh, my business partners had COVID-19. Uh, my, my partner's son and his uh, girlfriends have had it. We all know somebody that's, um, that's going to have it and it's going to hit us hard as a society. I mean, do, you know, do you want to follow on with that? Janice. Well, yeah, I mean, one thing that we were talking about um, before we came online was that, you know, within the next month, every one of us are going to know someone that has died from this yes. or know of somebody, a friend of a friend. Um, so, you know, we've got to take it seriously. And that's why, you know, I think it's great that you're you're kind of bringing this to the fore and, and uh, talking about it now. But another thing thought occurred to me is that I think it's really interesting when we're looking at key workers they have become you know at the forefront of, in terms of the, our reliance on them and their importance to the economy yes. we're not talking about bankers we're not talking about chief executives we've got no interest in those people and they're the normally the ones that take all the limelight they certainly have have the the salaries for it and i think this is a good thing that we've actually realized that we don't depend on the people with the bigger salaries we actually depend on the key workers so i think that's that's one thing our appreciation of the people that are really keeping the the world going not just the uk and i think it's wonderful that we're we're now realizing the importance of, and value real value that people add to the economy i think and i also think that we have a um there's a lot of people that provide the service you know the dry cleaners and the restaurants that, that may have been laid off or um, um, furloughed. Uh, and they, you know, we, you know, the fact that we're not able to go out to restaurants and that, it, it's, it's those, those people as well have a, a, a uh, make an impact on society. I, I remember when Lehman's went down, um, you know, working near um, in London um, and the people that lost their jobs that, that really hurt were the people that worked at the dry cleaners, the people that worked at the coffee shops, because people weren't spending the money and, and getting the, you know, the, the latte on the way to work and stuff. Um, and I think sometimes all of those people, the key workers and um, uh, the people that work in the leisure industry and stuff are, are forgotten. Um, and, and hopefully when we come out of this, we will actually be able to show our appreciation to them. I think but th there are things that we can do now. Use your local corner shop, <laughs> you know, kind of order locally, support, you know, local businesses that are still open. We can do that now. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, we I mean, I've actually found we've actually found that actually that it's the local shops that have the stock. Um, people have generally gone to the the, the supermarkets and um um, and you go there and there isn't anything. Well, that's kind of coming back now, but uh, uh, it, it was the local shops that have all the stuff. Um, but I think, um, I mean, one of the things that we can do from one of the learnings, I think, from this is that we can, um, even though there was all this difficulty um, and the fact that we are, um, you know, we our hearts go out to all the, to, to the people that are having difficulty, but we also can use this for positive change. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we're being we're, we're I've, I've said to people we're being given a, a, a gift of time, um, and um, you know I've said to you know a friend of mine who lives in in Cornwall who's lost all of his customers. You know, actually, 
you were telling me three weeks ago you didn't have time to do certain things now you do and i and i mean that from let's see that from a positive perspective rather than a negative perspective i i would i would agree with you we were talking um last week uh, about this and i th i think there's there's a real significant change in that we have with the gift of time and self isolation to really think about who we are as people what we want out of life what value we add and really kind of give that some thought and if you're on a path that you really don't want to be on life is so short as we know and this is the time to really invest in in yourself and if you're investing in yourself you're also investing in your business and you're investing in you know the company the people the customers your colleagues so i think this is a great time to really start looking at yourself and looking at what what you are here to do what value you have to add so so give me an example of that well you know i a, a really silly example mm. is that i decided in april i'm i'm going to spend this time investing in myself and doing something that i've always wanted to do so i set myself a 30 day challenge and i get up at five o'clock and i meditate for an hour and that has completely changed my whole day you know in the in and it may only be an hour or an hour and a half earlier but actually i have now have the thinking time or the reading time before my day get get started um and it's i think because you know like lots of people lots of my speaking engagements consultancy and training you know probably about 80 percent of them have been postponed so i've always um, there's things that I've, I've always been on the back burner. Well, now they're on the front burner. There are mm. activities that I'm doing, projects that I, I'm doing that I've never really had the time to do. And it may be starting with just updating your LinkedIn profile, being really clear about your, your message, making sure that you're not wasting time. We all waste time. But mm. actually, if you have a clear plan of what you're doing, you waste a lot, and especially the purpose behind what you're doing yeah. and what you moving towards the books that you're reading all of those things i think you can kind of design your life now you have the time yeah so i mean you were always you've always been somebody that is that has got up and gone to the gym in the morning so what do you, what is it that you're doing differently and how have you created that plan um i'm i am self-motivated so it makes it a, a, a little bit easier and you know i will literally sit at my desk from seven o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night yeah. And so I have to go to the gym. I have to exercise because otherwise my Fitbit thinks I'm dead, you know, because I literally <laughs> do not move. It's bleeping at me to move and I'm not doing it. I'll just think just the next thing, just the next thing. I absolutely love what I do. So instead of getting up early and going to the gym, I jog around the park. I wish the park opened at six because that would work really well for me, but it's seven o'clock. So I have now the thinking time between six and seven. And then I always go jogging or walking um, around my local park yeah and then you know i'm at my desk at eight o'clock but i'm really kind of ready for the day i've really kind of planned out my day it's still a working day there isn't any any different but it's i'm just reorganizing the way i do things okay so so what is it what are you doing now that you you said that you had a sense of purpose mm. what is it that you're doing that's giving you that well you know those um I'm talking, I've made a list of all the people that I haven't spoken to in, in a long time. And, you know, even my brother, I had an hour and a half conversation with my elder brother. I don't think I've spoken to him for so long in years. I speak to him often, but it's it's real snatches of conversations. And, and I realized, oh my God, he's got so much insight. He's not just my, my brother. So actually really valuing the relationships, even if they're familiar relationships that I've got. So one of my things is actually to deepen the relationships with my family right. and and also to think about my circle of friends, people around me. And there may be some people that actually get moved to the edges, <laughs> right, okay. you know? Um, so the purpose is to really value the relationships I have and invest and nurture those relationships and really think about uh, these are the relationships that I want to be in. Mm. So that's one thing that I'm doing. I've got a whole host of things. Um, it used to be very much kind of uh, business and financial orientated. And actually it's more about 
the kind of person I am and the kind of person, uh, the kind of influence I want to have and the circle of friends and family, the kind of relationships um, that I want to have. Um, so it's really, it's it, because of self-isolation, you know, I'd love to jump out of a plane, but you know, those kind of things are not possible. They're still on the list, but they're not possible to do, to do now. But also kind of like looking at, you know, uh, skills. I have thought perhaps my challenge for May might be to learn a language. I'm not that great at languages. And so maybe I'm gonna set myself that as a challenge for May. These are things that I'm thinking about. So every month I'm gonna set myself uh, a challenge. I would anticipate I will probably still get up at five o'clock and meditate. So actually now I've I've developed a habit in that area, then it may be the next month is to develop another habit. So that so what you're doing is that you're you're seeing this time as is time to invest in in yourself and also invest in other people because in terms of the friendship. Um, and as you say, develop habits which we probably don't have time for. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, I'm running my own business, so I still have a business. So it's about refocusing um, where in the next three, six, nine, 12 months, you know, where you're taking your business. What are the things that you really enjoy doing? And what are the things that you didn't? How you can refocus and redesign your business? Who are the customers that you love working with and love working with you? And actually putting that plan in place. Because at the beginning of each year, um, I do my annual plan. But of course, that needs to be, um, you know, I need to revise that. But I'm revising it being really clearly focused on in the next five years, three, five years where I'm taking my business, what are the things that I'm going to abandon now? Because this is the opportunity to do it. And what are the things that I'm really going to go full steam ahead on? Well, how can I start to gear that up now? What are the things that I need to put in place now so that when we're out of this lockdown, then actually I can go full steam ahead. So it's all of that preparation, refocusing, you know, your, your business, where you're going to put your energies. And of course, that's got to be aligned to who you are. What, you know, what are your core values? Who are the people you want to nurture, nurture in your life? It's just an extension of, of you and where you want to be. Mm. And, and I think that it, I think, you know, in a broader context, there's a great opportunity for um, individuals uh, and companies to, to, to invest in, in, in themselves um, and invest in their people because yeah. we are going to be, um, uh, we are going to get out of this. Um, and, it gives us an opportunity to not only understand the world today, but also the, the the future world, but also be to be fitter, stronger, and better people in in when we are the other side and whatever the exit strategy is. I think you're absolutely right. You know, I've revisited a lot of um, you know customers and clients and and connections, and you know, my real sweet spot is working with traditional salespeople that are kind of afraid of of the online world, mm. and we see. The online virtual world is the only world that we have nowadays. And so these are the companies that have delayed it, have yeah. put it off, that have kept with, you know, the old methodologies of, of selling. And of course, none of that's working now. Yeah. So, you know, this has really given them an opportunity to rethink how their world will be in you know next year i mean how much are we going to go back to the traditions and yeah. how much are we going to now use the the virtual world and actually continue with a lot of those the the way of doing business and so i love it that i'm able to have the conversations with these companies about how they're going to gear themselves up to use social media better, to, to use technology better, so that they're better able to serve their, their customers. Yeah, I, I, I just don't believe that we're gonna go back to a, um, a world where we're gonna have all these offices because we the reason the reason why people weren't working from home is because there was there was an option. Um, and the option was to do what they've been doing for 20 years. Now, you know, we've been told we have to work from home. Um, and and I think people are starting to say, well, why am I commuting for an hour to go and sit in an office and then do the same job I could do at home and then commute for an hour back again? 
when I can sit at home and, and, and the quality of life is better because I gain two hours just, you know, so I can meditate and, um, you know, go for a run in the evening or, or and I couldn't do those things before. So I just can't believe that the, the, the people will want to go back to where they were before. Um, yeah, and, and we're not going to fly, you know, you know, when, you know, the amount of, you know, we're just not going to do those things. Well, what's what's amazing is the ozone layer. Isn't that incredible? In such a mm. short space of time, it's repairing itself because we're not driving, we're not flying, you know, we're not polluting the, the world, which is amazing. But, you know, I, I my sister is uh, extroverted and I'm introverted. I mean, I'm loving this. I am really loving this. But, you know, the people that are not... She worked from home for a good three years and absolutely hated it, absolutely hated it. She really misses the offices. So I do, I, I mean, it's not just about extrovert and introverts, but there are people that like that sense of community. They are willing to do the two hours into work. So they would be fighting and screaming to get back into the office because that's work. And they also like the demarcation between home and, and work. So I think it, the, the important thing is, companies are going to have to offer the options yes this is definitely one of the options that are on the table and if you're not offering that then there will be a lot of people that will not want to work with with the the, the companies yeah i mean i saw a um uh, uh some research from uh, gartner last night which is saying that um cfos so chief financial officers you know have realized that they're paying a lot of rent for offices that maybe they don't need. And I think there'll be a shrinkage in terms of the um, uh, the, the, the need for office space. Um, and the longer this goes on and the more people are used to doing social things and having social coffee hours or Zoom calls or whatever, you know, and, and doing that sort of thing, I think the more people will, will realise that life is now online um and um and i think life is is going online which is why from a sales perspective we need to have the skills to sell online um if there's no face-to-face -face meetings um there's no conferences there's no cold calling whatever it's going to be very difficult yeah well i think we're really lucky that we have the technology Yes, it's just been sitting there, and we we've not really been using it. And you know, like, can you imagine if this happened even ten years ago? Mm. You know how we would be disabled. The you know we're worried about the economy, and so we should be. I mean, it's just frightening how quickly it goes away, like like it has. Um, but it will be able to quickly. Um, rejuvenate as well because now we have the technology that we didn't have 10 years ago and yeah. now we have so many more options and it seems really foolish can you remember we're off the age you where 20 years ago we were predicting this but it never really happened in you know people were still going into the office mm. they're still doing things in a traditional way this has just released us really and given us the opportunity of looking at the, the all of the choices yeah, the CEO of uh, WPP said uh, last week that we've had about 10 years of innovation in four weeks. Um, and, and I think that's very true, which is that we've, you know, concertina the um, the amount of um, uh, time. And a lot of people are, are realizing that um, that we now need, we, 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 you know, that, that we we live our lives online because actually that's the, the way that we need to do that as a as a society um and we can there's other things you know that there's benefits like your ability to you know i can get up and and meditate and i can go for a walk and i can do these things as well as doing a job from sitting from home mm, yeah yeah and it, you know i think these are really interesting times it's interesting that you you say in the way that you know we have you know uh, used technology but also if you think about it at the last um epidemic 18 was it 1918 the flu epidemic this then brought about for many European countries the national health service mm. you know which is amazing that we all rely on now who knows what's going to come out of this one? You know, what what new organization, what new way of, of thinking and, and, and doing is going to come out of this, this really significant um, event? Are we going to be more appreciative, kinder, you know, um, more generous? Are we going to be more community spirited? Are, are we going to have a change of mindset? I really think that, you know, 
this is such a significant time. It's not just for the pandemic, but it's actually the impact of the pandemic to uh, the, the ability to use the technology that has always been available to us in, in, in recent times, but the ability to um, marry that with the um, social dynamic and the ability to um, really utilize our mindsets, utilize our communities. I mean, look at the call for NHS. I'm one of those, those volunteers where it's, they wanted quarter of a million. They got three quarters of a million in short, uh, sh such a short space of time. So I do think there is something else that will come out of this. And it's not just about the technology, which is brilliant, but it's actually about the community, the social, the mindset, something else will come out of this. I think, uh, you know, every, every time there's been a pandemic, that pandemic, there has been transformational change within society. Um, you know, the, the, the reason why we are free and we're, and, and we don't have a, a feudal, um, uh, construction like we did that was because of a pandemic um and and you're quite right in saying something that th there will be transformational change from this um and i don't think anybody can predict what that's going to be no. um I, I think it will be that we're going to have a you know a far more take up on a mass use of technology um you know what the way that families are communicating through the use of um conference call software or um, you know, and um, and just the way that we're using video more, um, and I think that 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 in itself is going to be the, the the change. And obviously, we'll always have people that don't want the change, but uh, um, uh, certainly, I think in in our generation, we'll we'll see a, a, a massive change. Yeah, yeah, I think so, and I think it's exciting. You know, change is opportunity. Um, yeah. You know, so we kind of started this with you know all of the the challenges that we're going through. You know, many of the businesses that will go to to the wall. Um, you know, but there is like there is a kind of a social undercurrent. I think um, that's really enlightening. Um, and I'm really heartened to actually see that happening, especially as social media. It's been quite negative in the last couple of years, hasn't it? You know, so actually now it's kind of come round to be um, really, really positive. Well, there's been some amazing things that have spun off from social media where, um, you know, you've got um, people creating hashtags. I mean, it seems like a long time ago, but um samantha kelly in ireland created a hashtag self-isolation which is a way of people who were self-isolating could communicate um, and say uh, i can't go out can you get me some food and and there's been, and that then turned into a a global um 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 a movement um and now it's become like um every day you know you know every you know everyday support and communities have risen up to support people so um, there's lots of positives that have spun off from um, social media. You know, the the, the fact that um, in the UK we've gone outside on our Thursdays and we share our appreciation for people who work in the National Health Service. Again, that's something that's been driven through social media. You wouldn't be able to get that just by going on the news and telling people to go outside and clapping. Um, so um, there's some amazing uh, positives that have, that have spun off. And that means that more people have needed to get onto social media to be part of that and be part saying you're part of the conversation is a bit of a cliche, but um, being part of the community is actually being on social media. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, look how it, it's it's literally on fire within the space of 24 hours, how quickly, you know, you can be trending with something positive. And, you know, talking about the news, I mean, we're all so fed up of, of the news and the way that they kind of spin it. But actually now, because they're actually going out to the community to try and find news, which or much of it is good news stories that are based in the community that they're they're promoting, and that's what it should be about, really, rather than what it has been in the past. You know, with the you know dreaded B words. I would hope Brexit. For <laughs> yeah, you know, I would hope that that continues. That the news uh, is very much more community based. Um, sharing great stories um, that they're not leading on the news that they're actually following a lot of this that's already happening at a ground roots level 
Uh, that, that's that's fantastic. Janice, um, we're at 25 minutes, so we're kind of out of time. Um, and it's been great. I mean, I think, you know, the things that you're doing in terms of investing in yourself, I think is something that we could all learn from. I need to get off my um, chair and actually do something for myself. I have actually set myself a couple of tasks and I haven't started them yet. So, um, um, but I need to do them. And, and we have, we are being given this gift of time. Yes. Um, and uh, so thank you for today. Um, it's been great just having you on just to talk about and learn from people that are doing things positively. Thank you. Uh, Janice, <laughs> remind us where we can get hold of you again. Yes, Janice, J-A-N-I-C-E, B for Bertie, Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N. On all of the channels, I'm Janice uh, B. Gordon. So please do contact me. Thank you, Janice. And um, I'll see you soon. See you. Take care. Thanks, Janice. Bye. Stay 